Hi, this is Kelly from Petika Kelly and Play Learn Talk, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek at a game that we're going to be making together. Now, yours is going to look a little different depending on the theme that you want to implement, but the structure is going to be the same. So my goal is to create a series for you that has you feeling really comfortable and confident in creating a high quality memory match game. Now, I've done some research for you so that you can just save yourself the time, but I have gone through and looked at every single memory match game on Boom Learning. Okay. Now I've looked through to see what are the features that are really fantastic and are going to be really functional and useful and engaging for your students and the students of your customers. And I also took notes on all the features that I see are going to cause problems. Okay, there's a lot of things that inherently cause some problems for the users that you would be happy to avoid. Okay, so in this series, I'm going to point those out to you and show you how to avoid them so that you create really great decks from the very beginning, especially if you're a new creator. Okay, so this is the first variation we're going to learn how to create. I have other variations only because I was not able to put everything I wanted on one card because I got a little um, user message that said like I was overwhelming the card. So you want to be sure not to do that because if you have um, you know, users or customers who have users who are using like an older device, then all the features that you coded in may not work. Okay. So you just want to be uh, mindful of that. So that is why I've actually created three different variations that I will be teaching you in this series. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned it already, but make sure you subscribe so that you're notified when I post um, each new episode of this series. I plan on doing one every single day. And you can leave a comment below and just let me know what you'd like to see. And um, if you're having any trouble, you can reach out to me on the comment section or go over to Instagram at Petika Kelly. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and take a look. Here we have um, our home button on the top. This is my logo in the left corner. I like to designate that as the button that takes you back to the last navigation page. So we will learn how to do that. We're going to learn how to create this whole entire page in Keynote. You can follow along in whatever, you know, whatever um, workstation that you use to create yours. And we're going to create a title bar up at the top. I noticed in some of the games they were quite overwhelming and they kind of crowded the page. So I'm going to recommend having a nice small one. The kids do not care about the title. Uh, they care about the game, right? So we're going to keep it nice and clean and structured. Now we have a theme, and the reason I've incorporated the theme is to um, engage the students, okay? I found with my students that when there are characters in a two-player game, automatically, automatically kids are, are saying like, oh, I want to be the zombie, I want to be the vampire, right? So right away you have buy-in. So you want to create games that have um, you know, intrinsic buy-in for the students. It's going to feel great for the teacher or the therapist who's using the game. We also have up here at, uh, at the top a typable text box. If you have played any of my games, you know I love incorporating these and I highly recommend you do because they make your games so um, adaptable for, for users, okay? Now, if I was using this game for speech therapy, I could easily modify it to, you know, have a carrier sentence to use for articulation. I could model vocabulary. I could, you know, have a visual that expands the sentence. So once again, we're thinking about the user and how can we make their experience much easier and how can we make it so that they can support a variety of students? And that would be with this typable text box, okay? Now down here at the bottom, we have a sorting box, which of course we need to have. We need to have a sorting area so things don't get all crazy here, right? And we wanna make it really clear for our students who are learning the concept of same versus different. This is a matching game. Yes, we're targeting vocabulary and following directions and giving directions, but we're really focusing on same versus different, right? So let's make it easy for them to have an area to do that in. So here we have it down here. I'll demonstrate it in just a little bit. So we're also gonna be learning how to make designated areas and using the drop zone and draggable uh, features. And we're gonna learn how to make these cards, okay? So you see these cards have numbers on top of them. Now I have done this intentionally because it makes it easy for your user, who especially those who are keeping control of their mouse, right? If they're doing it during distance learning or teletherapy, it makes it really easy for their students to verbally designate what card they want, okay? If they're all just one color, it might look nice, but it's actually gonna be hard for their students to designate it. Um, they're kind of just left to designating it by row and column, which is a little bit older of a vocabulary than I would wanna use for this game, okay? So if you put numbers on top, it solves the problem before it even occurs. So 
what we would do in this game is we would type a carrier sentence. So maybe we want our students to be saying, um, I choose number two or whatever it is. So what we're going to do is take that word here and we're going to make it underline and there's our carrier sentence. Here we can put it in the center just by using the space bar. And now we have a, a nice carrier sentence. So I choose number two. We're going to drag it down to the vampire's box, okay? And we see candy. Now we've created a draggable piece that we're now able to drag down into this very clear area, okay? So we have candy. We could even come up here, delete this, and label candy, right? Or describe it. We have enough space to even describe you know, different features of it. So sweet and on and on and on, right? So now we're going to grab another one. So let's grab four. So we could repeat again up here, the carrier sentence. I'm not going to do it to save time. Um, look, this is actually our match. Okay. So we drag it down. So now we really just have them side by side. Okay. We've eliminated all of this distraction here and we've made it very easy for our students to see them side by side. Are they the same or different? We're also going to learn how to make a transparent box. That's going to allow you to highlight the concept words, okay? So these are the same, okay? So now that we've double checked that they're the same, okay? And this has slowed down our process and really allowed our students the time to compare these. We can now collect these over to our box area here, okay? So if we keep going, let's just drag this one down. We'll drag this one over here. Oh, oops, actually we'll do this. We'll drag them over here, right? We're going to drag our items over, okay? So once again, we're going to repeat the process. These are the same or are they different? They are different, okay? And now we need to put them back. So a problem that I had on some cards that I tested today is it got really messy or I couldn't put them back where they went, or I could, but I could imagine a student not knowing like where they went back to, okay? So what we're going to learn how to do is this. We're just going to toss it back, right? It goes back to where it goes. So when you let go of it, it's going to pop back over. Same with these. We don't have to remember. They just are going to go right back. Okay. Um, we're also going to learn how to, like if your, your student or your user student got this off the page, we're going to learn how to get it back and code it to go right back in. Okay. Um, so that is the game so far. Um, but like I said, we're also going to learn how to incorporate sound and clickable items and also how to designate a winner in an exciting way and also build in rematches and an instruction page um, and a ton of other things that I'm not going to show you in this video. Okay, so you'll just have to subscribe and stay tuned. Leave a comment below if you're excited about this um, as well as anything else you'd like me to do a series on. And please share this with other creators who are going to find it useful. And I look forward to hearing from you. Bye, you guys.